This is a follow-up video to my uh, SFIC picking analysis. We're looking at a master keyed SFIC or small format interchangeable core. The question is, is a master keyed SFIC easier to pick? Well, I think we all know, of course it is. So let's take a look why. This is a World War II best padlock. You can tell it's World War II because it's not brass. It's made out of cast zinc or some other kind of material because brass was in a short supply during World War II. And it's a six pin key or six pin core. Here's the original key. And uh, I had a heck of a time picking this lock to control to get, this is what I wanted to get the core out so we could look at the pins. Okay, here are the original pins. I got the uh, core out of the padlock using the lab annex, which you could review in my previous uh, video on SFIC picking analysis, if you want to see how that was done. So here they are. These are the original pins that came out of that lock when I was able to pick it to control. So I want you to notice these are the key pins. They're labeled A. My friend of mine, Josh, labeled all these key pins and all the operating pins according to the actual specification. If you measure the length, that's the numbers that they are. So these were the key pins. Above that, we have master pins. Notice we have a master pin in every single chamber. That means this is a fully master pin, master keyed lock. And above that, these are pins that we call control pins. These would determine the control shear line according to how the bidding is lift, the key would lift the operating, all the pin stack to the various shear lines. These are just called top pins. They're uh, to force everything down and the springs would be on top of that, which I'm not shown here because we're not interested in that at the moment. Okay, here I've taken the liberty of replacing all those old worn out pins with brand new pins. The main focus was so that you could see the nickel silver pins or key pins. See, they're a different color. Those are the key pins. So we got a, a two, one, four, one, two, and a five. And above that, we have the same identical pin stacks and brand new lab pins. So let's take a look what the, where the uh, shear lines are, and that'll make things move along. Okay, now we have the operating and the control shear line. It's a number 10 distance between the two shear lines. So here's the operating shear line. Notice that uh, we're all set. Here's an operating shear line, and here's a control shear line. Wait a minute. We have a, a, a chamber here on a control shear line, and here we also have a container, chamber on the control shear line. Notice I've marked those here. So a number four keep cut would lift the pins and chambers number three to both operating and control shear line at the same time, which also occurs here in chamber number five. And number two key cut gets both the operating and the control shear line. Notice that this distance here, four plus six equals 10. Well, that just so happens to be this same distance between the control and the operating shear line. Same thing in this chamber. A six plus four equals 10. So we've hit both the operating control shear line at the same time. And now this really only occurs on this very specific lock, but in many cases you may have, with a master pin lock, you may have uh, several cases where the control and the operating shear line are the same, and it could be even with no master pins, but that wouldn't generally be the case. So here in this case, We've gotten both the, uh, we're still looking at the operating and control shear line, but notice now in chamber number six with a seven key pin lift, I have used this number two master pin and this number 10 control pin, which actually also makes this one both at operating and control at the same time. So I've left these other chambers the same except for number one here. I added this number four master pin just to show you a little variety of what's going on in lifting these key pins. So next I'm going to show you a little uh, a little slide uh, uh, stop action of uh, lifting these these pins and these pins up and down and see what happens.
So I hope you enjoyed that stop action. Here is that same slide. I just stopped it here. I um, wanted you to see that to get to the control shear line here in chamber number one, I still have to lift it a little bit higher to get to this shear line here. Here in chamber two, I've gone way past the control shear line. I'm still at an operating shear line. You know, I'm an operating this this key this this operating shear line. You know, the lock will open, but I'm way past control here in this chamber number three. Yeah, I'm both at operating and control at the same time. In this chamber number four, I've done a one lift. I've really lifted this thing to the maximum, and I've passed the. Uh, control shear line, but I do have an open here in chamber five. Well, wow. a number two key pin lift lifted both, uh, got me to both operating and shear. Here in chamber seven, we saw this, you have to add this number two key pin to give me this 10 control pin. So I got that at both operating and shear at the same time. So here's another possible uh, key bidding that would, uh, or another key pick that could get us to operating. See, I've lifted number six here. Now I've used the master pin. We've seen that, but here's a different one. One plus four gives me five. That's a five key pin, or a five key bidding, excuse me. And that puts us on an operating shear line here, just lifting the key pin to number four. Here, I've got a one plus eight gives me a nine. That's the key cut. I need a number nine to get me to operating. Here I've got a two, and this again as both the control and the operating shear line at the same time. Here I dropped away the master pin, so but still I just need a number five key lift in chamber six to get me to that operating shear line. So here the lock would open. Now here's yet another possible operating configuration where I've lifted everything above each master pin. So this takes a six, five, eight, nine, eight, seven would be the key cuts to uh, open this lock to operating. And notice in chamber seven, when we have the five plus the two, we've got a seven. And with the number 10 control pin in there, that gives us both the control and operating shear line at the same time. This was just really another slide to show you there's a many possible ways to reach an operating shear line. But then how many ways are there to reach a control shear line? We'll take a look at that next. Okay, now we're at control shear line here. So we now have picked this lock to control. Let's look at the key lifts that it required. A number four. A number nine in chamber two. I mean, this is a very shallow lift. I've barely lifted the key or the pin stack. Here, here, number two, lift in chamber five, I've lifted it a whole lot. Here in chamber six, which is at the very front of the lock, <clears throat> notice I've only lifted it to this first shear line here, and this is also an operating shear line. If I kept lifting it to a number five lift, I'd click past this master pin and I would be at operating right here, but I would have passed control. So this particular chamber takes one, two clicks to get to control. Look over here. Here's op, here's control. And I'm at a two lift, which is really quite a high lift. If I was at this shear line here, this would be two plus six would be a number eight. That's barely lifting it up. But I lifted it really high to get to control. If you look at chamber number four, I've got already passed it up. This was a nine. Eight plus one is a nine. So that's barely lifting it. I lifted it up more. I got to control here. Over here, this is another chamber where I've hit control and operating at the same time. But I've lifted it up considerable amount. This uh, four plus four here would have been an eight. So I've just, if I lifted it to an eight to the first click, <coughs> then I would have just got an operating shear line along here, but I lifted it to a four, which also put me at control. So this 
This was kind of deceptive because there were two clicks here and then we're both at control and operating at the same time. Now this is a very interesting chamber because here when I started just this is just a very small lift. I very just raised the pin stack just a very little and I've hit control shear line first. I have not lifted far enough to, to hit number five which should be this one plus four, where well, that would be a five, or even lift it higher all the way to a one, which is just hardly any key cut at all on the key cut, but it really lifts the pin stack really high to a one. I mean, I'm way past control. So this one really faked me out badly because I kept over lifting this stack. When I realized and I stopped, when I felt this first click on number nine, which was barely lifting it, I decided to stop there and that turned out to be a control shear line so that so if I had kept lifting past that and looked for more clicks I never would have got a pick to control over here see we have you know we're still below the, this operating shear line so we've clicked there we haven't got to a number two lift yet so we passed the number six lift um, Excuse me, we haven't gone to number six. We've gone to four. Well, we've passed the number six lift, and we've gone to a four, which has put us here. We could keep lifting even higher and go to a number two. So this whole thing is a big mess. <laughs> it, but there's only one control shear line, which is where, literally what I wanted to get to, and there are many operating shear lines. This is a kind of a lucky case where you hit... The control shear line first. These both the same, but you still have to get there. This is both the same. You know, this is a 10 distance. This is a 10 distance, and this is uh, uh, this one here is a 10 distance to get to control. So in these three chambers, yeah, we've hit control and operating at the same time, but you don't really realize that. I think it was fairly obvious to me over here because I could detect this little two keep in I was either getting a click on five or a click on seven so if I left it on seven and didn't try to lift it any higher that was successful and this one really threw me because I had to lift it this was my first click just barely lift it and then I'm on the control shear line so it's just kind of a crazy scrambled up mess these are like really two independent locks two different shear lines but they interact with each other <laughs> So in closing, yeah, a master keyed small format interchangeable core is uh, easier to pick to operating, but it's uh, much diff more difficult to get to control. That was kind of the whole lesson I got here, and there was really no relation madness between the two. I just you just keep getting operating, operating, operating. And you have to really kind of realize where your pins are set, kind of memorize what's lifting where and just keep working at it and you'll get it you know, I just wanted to show you here that I had actually uh, created a control key obviously because I knew the bidding uh, here's the control key with a C but the main point I wanted to make and this was another operating key I made just for the heck of it you can see the bidding is quite a bit different but the whole point of this is that the uh, there are up to 64 possible operating keys. So there's 64 shear lines. There's two for each position. You know, there's two here, two there because of the master pins. So two times two times two times two times two or two to the sixth gives you 64. So there's 64 possible operating shear lines. So you can be picking on this thing and you just get operating after operating. But the key is to memorize and know where those operating positions are and you kind of kind of eliminate those and you eventually get to control that's apparently the only way you have to do it so thanks